this video we're going to cover the user interface of Ed Discovery, how it works with panels and tabs and pop-out windows and how to theme it. So let's start by theming the program. What we mean by theming is changing the colors and fonts and to uh, your specification. To do this you go to the settings panel and you can see the group box with theme. You can then select a theme from the drop down selector. Ed Discovery comes with many different themes. Uh, Windows default is the one that always starts up when you first install Ed Discovery. So let's try another theme. We will try Elite Verdana, my favorite. As you can see, Ed Discovery has changed into this new theme, uh, which is a, a dark theme. You can then select other themes if you wish to try it. Elite Callisto, EDSM, and the fun one, Green Bays. Once a theme has been selected, Ed Discovery will remember this and apply it at the next startup. You can also edit a theme. For instance, if we go back to Elite Verdana and then hit the Edit Theme button, a dialog will pop up. This dialog allows you to set colors for all of the theme patches and also change the font. Click on a patch to change its color. Click on the font box to change the font. For instance, here we'll pick Century. Custom themes that you make can be saved using the Save Theme button. So now let's talk about the UI. Ed Discovery has many panels of information it can display. Pressing the plus button on the tab bar will show you all the panels that you can select from. These panels can be placed either in the tab bar, popped out into a window on their own, or placed inside grid or splitter windows. To add a panel to the UI, you have a choice. You can either pop it out into a window by itself by hitting the pop out icon, or you can add it to the tab bar along the top of the program by hitting the tab plus button. For instance, let's add visited stars to the tab bar. Click on the tab plus button on visited stars. The visited stars panel shows you a list of the stars that you visited in descending order. To remove a tab panel, right click on the tab and you have options to remove, rename, insert a new tab with a panel, which is like using the selector plus tab, or you can order a new pop out panel by clicking on the pop out panel option. Two special types of panel are the grid panel and the splitter panel. These panels allow other panels to be embedded within them. An example of a splitter panel is the history tab. The history panel by default has five sub panels embedded inside it. You can resize these sub panels by moving the cursor over the, to the join between the two panels. When the icon changes to a move icon, you can then left click and drag to change the relative proportions of the two panels. You can also do this with the split between the two sides of the panel and you can do it between the splits between the three panels on the right, resizing each one of them in turn. Right clicking on the separator between the panels gives you options. You can change the orientation of the split between the two panels. You can further split the top or the bottom panel depending on exactly which uh, side of the panel split you pick. Uh, to give you more panels embedded inside the splitter window and you can actually merge the two panels together to give you less panels in the splitter window. Now let's make a fresh instance of a splitter tab. Press the tab plus in the splitter. A splitter window initially starts with two empty splitter panes. To select the contents of each pane, move and hover your cursor over the top bar of the pane. Click on the panel selector icon and select the contents of the pane. Do the same with the other splitter. To create a third plane, right click on the 
splitter bar and tell it to split the top panel. Assign contents to the third pane. To remove the split, right click again on the bar and merge the top panel. The grid panel works differently to the splitter window. It initially starts up empty. To add a panel to it, click on the panel icon and select a panel. Here we've placed a log panel on the grid. Let's place another panel, the history view grid. The two panels are shown overlapping. You can change that by clicking and holding on the panel border and drag in. You can resize it by clicking on the bottom right corner and drag in. The red outline on a panel shows that is the currently selected panel. The red outline indicates which panel would be deleted if you hit the delete button. Clicking on another panel's border will make that the selected panel. To pop out a panel into a separate window, click on the pop out icon. This will open the panel in a floating window which you can then move around and place anywhere on your desktop. The pop out window has a set of controls in the top right which allows you to configure how the panel interacts with the rest of the desktop. From the right, the square icon allows you to control whether or not the panel is on top of all other windows at all times. Click on it to indicate that the window should stay on top. The next icon allows you to control whether or not the title of the panel is shown in the Windows desktop. The third icon allows you to control whether or not when the panel is in transparent mode the name of the panel is shown. The final icon allows you to control the transparency setting. This is not present on all windows. When present it allows you to set the background to transparent. The transparency control works through four modes of operation. The first is non-transparent which is the default. The second is the window is transparent with the controls active and the window will activate and go non-transparent when the cursor moves inside the window. The third mode, the controls are active but the window will only activate when the activate key, which is normally shift, is held down. And the fourth mode is the controls are not active and the window and the controls will only activate when the activate key is held down. An example is shown here. Here we've dragged the summary panel over Elite Dangerous. Elite is configured into borderless mode. It won't work when it's on normal full screen. It needs to be in either windowed mode or borderless mode. We've dragged the summary panel over the top. We will now size it to shape. We will then set the transparency control to TF. That means that the window will not be clickable as you can see the mouse going over it does not activate it either unless you hold the shift key down in which case it will activate and be controllable as soon as the cursor leaves the area of the window the window goes back to non-clickable mode don't also forget to set the window on top toggle on so that the window will stay on top even if you click on elite The final UI element on the Ed Discovery main screen is the toolbar. The toolbar at the top of the window allows you to configure your commander. You can select between multiple commanders if you've got them on your system. You can tell it to refresh the history. You can control the profile that you use. We will cover profiles in another video. You can open the 3D and 2D maps. You can manage and edit add-ons. We will cover add-ons in another video. You can open a panel directly from the toolbar and you can perform a sync of your data to EDSM. This is not normally needed to be pressed as the program normally does this automatically. The final part is that you can unpin the toolbar from the Ed Discovery window and let it roll up. It now rolls up. If you wish to unroll it, you just hover over the roll up bar.
thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more EDD videos. So for now I say bye bye and fly safe commanders.